Our scripture this morning comes from the book of Revelation, the 21st chapter, verses 1 through 7, and I invite you to follow along. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the former heaven and the former earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, made ready as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. I heard a loud voice from the front throne say, Look, God's dwelling is here with humankind. God will dwell with them and they will be God's people. God will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. There will be no more mourning, crying, or pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. Then the one seated on the throne said, Look, I'm making all things new. He also said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, All is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water from the living spring. Those who emerge victorious will inherit these things. I will be their God and they will be my sons and daughters. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We began this justice conversation a little over six weeks ago. Over the last few weeks, we have named the need for justice to roll down like waters. We have claimed the gift that is given to everyone, that we are created in the image of God, that all are beloved children. Over the last few weeks, we have named the hard truth that there cannot be a disconnect by what we do and say here in worship and how we live out the rest of our faith the rest of the week. Over the last few weeks, we have embraced our call to be repairers of the breach. As people of faith, as we begin and emerge into this new reality, we realize that we cannot recreate something that no longer exists. As repairers of the breach, we are called to open our hearts and our minds to where God is moving in and among us, bringing forth new life so that our communities are livable once more, are sustainable once more. Over the last few weeks as a community of faith, we have invited the waters of justice to renew us, to restore us, to break down those hardened boundaries which we often cling. Over the last few weeks, as a community of faith, we've invited the waters of justice to sustain us as we explore how we, as Christ's representatives here on earth, how we have, are called to work together with God to make a better, safer, and more hospitable world for all of God's children. And now we find ourselves at the banks of the river ready to enter into the promised land. We are being welcomed into this new Jerusalem, ready to be a community of faith that is equipped for this new reality in this 21st century post-COVID, whatever that means. We are here at the banks of the river the new Jerusalem where we are invited, where all are invited to experience a world that is just, that has full of peace and plenty, where all are welcome at God's table. We are ready to enter into the promised land, enter into that new Jerusalem where we are invited to experience the radical love of God. We are welcome. Welcome. That should be a pretty easy sermon for me to preach. After all, as Midway Christian Church, we've lived at, with our mission for the last 10 years of welcome. 
Through our mission of welcome, we have visioned and we have sustained free monthly community dinners. And at these dinners, our neighbors, our friends, people are invited to come to the table and break bread with one another. No requirements for membership, no donations asked to come and greet and meet their neighbor, to know them more than just a wave at the post office, to get to know their neighbors and strengthen the bonds of our community. Through our mission of welcome, we have shared our physical resources with others. People in our community know that our space is a place of welcome and they are invited to come and be a part of that mission and to live out and do their group activities. Cub Scouts, Girl Scouts, Al-Anon, AA, people who rent our certified kitchen so that they can make items for the farmer's market. It's a well-known fact in our community that you can come and use our space and that you will be welcome. Yet after spending time with all this and knowing that these missions are wonderful and life-giving and life transformation, as we are at the bank of the river, we know that it would be so easy us for us to say, that's it. After 10 years, we are a community of welcome. After all, we've got the t-shirt, the catchphrase, and the stained glass window to prove it. <laughs> Yet after spending time in prayer, after spending time in this text and with this text, after spending time of listening to where God is moving in and among us, I'm realizing that these missions are just the beginning. It's a beginning which barely scratches the surface of what it means for us as Midway Christian Church to be a community of welcome. A community of welcome which God has created and called us to be. For us to fully live into this welcome, we are called to build on our foundations and to expand our understanding of what it means to be a community that welcomes all. We're called to offer a vision of not a church that's a business as usual, but one that will speak up and speak out when we see injustices in our world. We're called to be a community of faith that is committed to being a place of radical welcome inside and out in the world. We are called to affirm our oneness with all of humanity. For us as a community of faith to be that community of welcome that God has called us to be, that God has created us to be, we are called to put aside our privilege and continue the hard work of justice making. Even if it makes us uncomfortable, even if it is painful, even if we have to own some uncomfortable truths about who we are and who we have been as a mostly white, affluent community of faith. Now let me stop right there, and I need to make a confession. As I said earlier, this sermon should have been easy for me to write, because welcome is in the water here at Midway Christian Church. But I will be the first to admit that I struggled to write this sermon. I kept putting off that moment until Saturday night, Mike, because you have to write the sermon, you know that, right? I kept putting off, putting those words to that blank stream, struggling to write the sermon, not because of you, but because of me. I struggled to write the sermon on welcome for the reasons I just listed. Becoming is uncomfortable. Becoming is painful. Becoming who a person of welcome, a serving a community of welcome is going to push me in ministry like I've never been pushed before in my 19 years of ministry. I have been struggling and put off writing this sermon because I was thinking of my security, my comfort, and my beautiful bubble of protection. Yet I know if I do that, if I choose security and comfort over the process of becoming the person that God has called me and creating me to be, then I know that I am taking the easy way out. 
I know that I would not be honoring my call as a minister of the gospel. My faith, my belief, my story that tells me God is at work in the world bringing healing and wholeness calls me to look beyond the surface, calls me to look with the heart and the eyes of God, calls me to see where God's spirit is moving in and among us and calls me to go and do likewise. And when I do this, I realize that our text for today, our text which tells us of the day when the kingdom of God is fully realized here on earth, our text for today which tells us of that day when God's shalom is fully realized here on earth, our text for today which tells us of the day when God comes and fully dwells with God's people once more. We realize that the welcome that the author of Revelation is talking about and describing is so much more than a mission statement. It is a way of being. It's a way of living. It's a way of being in relationship with one another. It's a way of becoming the body of Christ here on earth. It's a way of making justice, not just for a select few, but for all of God's people. The author tells us that on that day, that day when the kingdom of God comes in all its glory, God's radical welcome will truly be lived out and experienced by all because death will be no more. There will be no more mourning. There will be no more suffering. There will be no more pain. The author tells us that on the day when God's radical welcome comes to full realization here on earth, that all the old system, all the old ways will pass away. Those systems that created chaos and brokenness, they will no longer exist and everything will be made new. The author tells us that when this vision of God's shalom is fully realized here on earth, all tears will be wiped away and everything will be new. This is our hope. This is the vision which guides us. This is what we are called to bring forth as the people of God. A time when all are welcome at the table, where all are seen as beloved children of God, where labels and boundaries fall away. These la labels of boundaries that separate and, di and divide, they fall away. And everything is new. And we come together. Everyone comes together as one. This is the vision of welcome, which the author of Revelation puts forth for us today and all days. And yet we know when we look at our world, we are not there yet. As a culture, as a society, even as a community of faith, we have a long way to go before we truly live out God's full radical welcome in our midst. I don't share this to depress anyone or to discourage anyone. I share this as a way to renew us, to enliven us, to refresh us. Because see, what we tend to ignore as we talk about those waters of justice rolling down, we tend to ignore that these are baptismal waters. They are waters that invite us to quench our thirst, to ease the dryness of our souls. The justice, the waters of justice are baptismal waters, waters which wash away all that separates us from God. The waters of justice are baptismal waters which remind us who we are and whose we are. The waters of justice become our modes of action, carving even the hardest rocks and solid earth to make a way where before there was none. The waters of justice are waters to prepare us, enliven us, and strengthen us as we become the people of welcome that God calls us to be by breaking down oppressive systems and structures and creating a road to a future marked by equity and equality for all. The waters of justice are baptismal waters, washing away the old systems which create chaos and brokenness. The waters of justice are baptismal waters rolling down and making everything new. I said at the beginning of this series that I don't pretend to have all the answers or even where I knew where we would be in six weeks. 
And six weeks later, that still remains true. What I do know is that the process of becoming is messy and it's difficult, but is what we are called to do. It does not happen overnight. And even if it's a good thing, it will not be easy for us. Yet we know it's what God created and, and calls us to do as people of faith. Our calling as the people of God is to be bold, to be audacious, to take risks, to transform, because the process of becoming has never been about us. It's about the very character of God, the God who has loved us since the beginning of time, the God who loved us when nobody would, else would, the very character of God who will love us no matter what. And as we continue our journey of becoming a community of welcome, becoming the people that God created and calls us to be, we can begin to live more fully into our call to work with God, to make a better world, a safe world, a more hospitable world, a more sustainable world for all of God's people. This is our mission. This is our vision. This is who we are called to be. May it be so. Amen.